change some things around or see if I can go back to the drawing board or whatever, and then um, you know, they'll come up with another idea. Um, in other cases, uh, the artist or the label will already have sort of a basic idea or basic feel for what they um, want to accomplish. Um, and then I just kind of fill in the blanks or I, you know, I, I fine tune their, their, you know, their rough idea. Um, like the case with the, uh, let me try to think, uh, the T-Pain video. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but you know, it's kind of that fr frozen kind of effect. Like they were already, like they, Jive was already sure and T-Pain was already sure that he wanted to do something like um, a scene he saw from the movie, The Good Guys. There's a scene, I guess, like in a, in a bar where uh, everything's frozen. And I had already been familiar with that whole concept, you know, by watching uh, a commercial for like a Philips carousel commercial where they did that effect, I mean, really well. And they had like motion, uh, uh, what are they called? It's, it's, the, it's those, the uh, kind of robotic, you know, it's a robotic de uh, uh, device that can, you know, when, when it, you can program it to kind of track a certain motion with the camera and then it'll do the same exact motion again. So then you can put plates in the background and match, you know, the, uh, the foreground stuff with the background stuff. But we didn't have the luxury of, uh, of, of, of using that kind of technology because, you know, our budget was relatively limited. Um, you know, on that particular video, it was like 85000 85, And for a video to do like a carousel, I mean, they, I think it was like a million dollar budget to that commercial. So they needed to find a way to, um, to do that, you know, to do that, to try to at least achieve that similar effect without having to go the expensive route. So um, I was like, oh, I, you know, I, I was like, I'll figure it. I'll figure out a way to do it. This, I, I know I can do it. So I sent him a rotor treatment, and just basically, you know, all we did was use a Steadicam guy. I motion tracked everything, 3D motion tracked everything, and then inserted certain elements. And it is what it is. But you know, from the get go, you know, that's what they wanted to do, and I just kind of executed. Um, and there's another video, uh, like the Travis Porter video. They pretty much said this one where they're sliding things on iPads and everything, um, and the, they didn't say anything about iPads, but when they came, to, they approached me about doing a video. They said they just wanted something different. Um, they just didn't want to do a typical rap video, and I guess they they felt that you know I, I you know I try to do something that's not too cliche if I can avoid it, and uh, and so I came up with that idea. So that's that's an example of where you know they have like a big abstract notion of what they want to do, and I just kind of try to fulfill that. And then other times, you know, are some some people are just like I don't know what you listen to it. You tell me what you think. Or they'll, they'll send me like three songs. They're like, you pick the one that you're feeling the most and we'll do the video for that. So it all, it all really varies. Uh, but to kind of get back to what your original question, yeah, I mean, the collaborative process does does happen, you know, occasionally. And I really embrace it and, and you know, I encourage it because to me, it feels like, you know, you're a team and, you know, like, like Jeremy Lin and Tyson Chandler. <laughs> and, uh, you know what I mean? No, but really it does feel like that team effort. And then when you're done, you both feel like, Wow, that was our baby. We did it. We accomplished it. That's awesome. And uh, so, yeah, I, I really do enjoy that. As much as you enjoy Jeremy Lin? No, as much as you enjoy this Lin interview. <laughs> All right, next. <laughs> no, no, this is. Um, I was just wondering, you said you're like really ADD with a lot of your projects. I'm sorry, what was that again? Uh, you're really like, you mentioned that you're really ADD with a lot of your projects. And I was wondering, um, do you ever see yourself like undertaking like a bigger project in the future, like maybe like a movie or something, like a? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good question. Yeah. In fact, that's it's like right now in this, in this uh, point of my life and what's going on right now. I'm in the middle of developing m more narrative-based projects, like feature film stuff, short film projects. I really, really enjoy writing, and I enjoy writing dialogue, and that's uh, something that I haven't been able to really exploit yet or, 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 or delve into and explore more of. So that's really exciting for me and kind of reigniting, you know, this flame I have and passion and love I have for film, the filmmaking process. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm working on now is, you know, developing a bunch of different little, you know, narrative driven projects and, you know, feature films, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's definitely very, very much an interest of mine and something that I'm pursuing at the moment. And w would you also say that like, like being a music video director is like kind of a, a good springboard to get into that? Yeah, uh, I think so. I think anything really that, you know, where you have to, you know, work with the medium, the video medium, the film medium, work with a crew, um, you know, deal with all the, uh, the ins and outs that you would typically deal with, you know, on, on a larger scale, like with a feature film. Um, 
I, I think the commercials are good. Um, even like even like corporate corporate video. I know a lot of people like start out. You know, when I was in college, I was trying to do like little side corporate video stuff. It's it, you know, it's because you're, you're still dealing with actors, still dealing with people. You're still trying to direct people and and, and make them uh, make them kind of do what you want them to do. How you how you you want your vision to play out, and you're there kind of like puppet master trying to make it all happen. Um, music video directing to me, um, yeah, I think it is. I mean, you, you uh, a lot of you know feature film directors that are really successful now are you know previously directed music videos or started as music video directors. Um, you know, you guys are familiar with Spike Jones. Michelle Gondry, Mark Romanek, you know, a lot of David Fincher, you know, a lot of these guys that I really admire, you know, started there. So, you know, definitely it, it, it could be a springboard. Um, yep. Lucas. Um, I was wondering, um, you mentioned working with uh, Premiere on the Evidence video. Um, is it common for, uh, like, if you're doing a hip hop video for the producer to be part of that process? Or like, how much say, does the how involved is the producer of the song of a hip hop song usually in uh, when you're doing those videos? Um, you know, it's funny because I, I feel like they, they should have more involvement than they actually do. Um, to answer your question, like right off the bat, like they have they have almost zero involvement typically. Like I, I rarely ever deal with the producer of the song when I'm doing a video. Um, the only time. The most typical way uh, uh, you know a producer will get involved is like making a cameo, especially in rap videos. Rap videos, you know, are known for cameos, so you know you're gonna have the producer in there mugging and whatnot. Um, and so that's you know that, that's that, and that that's and uh, no, that's how like guys like Scott Storch and who else are like really hammy producers. You know, those are the those are the kind of the vehicles that they use to kind of get their their name, their face, and the uh, brand recognition out there. So I think it could be a good thing. Um, but I try to look out, you know, for the producer because I, I'm, I'm very, I very much respect the creative process, all aspects of it. And, uh, like for instance, like that falling down video, I don't know if you guys were able to watch it, the evidence video, the black and white one. Um, in the beginning, you know, no one told me to do it, but in the beginning, there's like a title card, uh, like two or three title cards. And then in the bottom, I put, um, music production by Rocky. Um, you know, no one said to do that, but I was just thinking, man, this, you know, I, I know how much a producer is involved with the process as far as the song is. I mean, a lot of times the producer is the one who pretty much spearheads everything, spearheads everything and puts it all together. So, you know, I try to interject as much props, I guess, when I can, but, um, but typically, no, there's, there's hardly uh, ever any involvement directly with the producer when it comes to the, the videos. Was being in the presence of DJ Premier like being in the presence of a deity? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, it was uh, it was surreal, man. It was um, yeah, I don't know how to put it into words. I mean, you're, are you familiar with D and D Studios before it was headquarters? Yep. So you know that was D and D, and I was just to be in there, you know, growing up listening to his music, hearing the legend of D and D, you know, where all these you know legendary. Uh, MCs, you know, would go and record and hang out and this and that, and, and I'm sitting there just hanging out with these guys. I'm hanging out with Premier, and and at one point, Premier walked out of the studio, and I and I, I like a kid, man. I, I jumped in a seat behind the board. Take a picture, take a picture, quick, 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 quick. All right, cool. And I, I jump out. I'm like, wow, you know. And it's being able to be geek, geeked up, geeked about stuff like that is is awesome because that's what you know. That's why you do it, you know, for stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that was, that was really surreal and, and really, uh, yeah, beyond words. Yeah, Ross. Yeah, I have a 7D as well, so I was curious if you have any, if you've had any problems with the 7D and, um, any effects that you found that you liked, because I think SLRs are going to be definitely an affordable option for us to Yeah, um, yeah. I is that my feedback or okay? Uh, yeah, I love I love the seventy. Uh, yeah, DSLRs. I mean, you guys, you, you guys are the generation who are getting all these goodies and you know the great. I see it as almost like a not a revolution, but more of like a re another renaissance period going on right now with technology and and how it's implemented in in the filmmaking process. Not only the way we we uh, go out and gather the information and 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 shoot the shoot the material, but how it's delivered. You know, with YouTube and Vimeo and all these other ways of, of, of doing it, like the whole, the whole, the whole game plan of how you attack something like a creative venture, like a music video or a film or, or whatever, is, is different now, and uh, and it's in a really exciting time now that and I'm definitely embracing. And the DSLR, the whole thing with DSLR thing is awesome. I mean, I think it gives, 
anybody the, the empowerment to go out and just create something. Like you have an idea, you just do it. And that's, you know, it's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much what it is now. Um, 7D, I haven't had any problems with it. Um, rolling shutter maybe. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I love it. I mean, it's, it's, I've shot a lot of videos with it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know what? It's funny because early on, you know, I, ne I never really had a mentor per se. And it's, and it's, it, it's kind of relates to what I was saying before, actually, with the whole, you know, the YouTube thing and the internet in general and being able to just find information on anything. Pretty, I would say the internet was my mentor because in the beginning, I'm, I'm trying to teach myself, you know, you open up After Effects. If you haven't used After Effects before, um, or any any type of software program, and you and you're really not familiar with it, and you open it up and you look at the user interface, you're like, shit, like where, where do I start? You know, I mean, you know all these different little little buttons and, and and terms and like stuff I don't even get, and so it's it's very overwhelming at first. And so what I what I did initially is just I right, do you know as with anything, just do kind of the basic stuff. Put I put together, all right, I can make this square move from here to the other side of the screen, and that's literally. How I like what I, the first thing I did was learn how to move one little object from the left side of the screen to the right side. I'm like, what? And I thought it was amazing. I'm like, look, I can make it bounce up and down all around the screen. You know, just being able to control that. You know, because I was I was already used to just you know editing and you know all you're doing pretty much with editing is you're just cutting the video and uh, you know placing parts here and there. But with the whole After Effects thing, it just opened up a whole new world. And uh, and just that excitement is what kind of propelled me to want to learn more and to be able to teach myself more. So I'm like, okay, the whole thing is, this whole little picture is moving around. So I'm like all excited about that. And so I'm like, well, what else can I do? And so I, you know, I, I go on the internet, look up tutorials and start to build upon that. And it, before you know it, you just pretty much pick up a lot just by, you know, the, the sheer effort of going out there or going on the internet and going, watching tutorials and just trial and error pretty much. Um, and and that's and that's the pretty much the same uh, uh, train of thought that I employ when I get into something else like like after After Effects I got into Cinema 4D and that was a whole new 3D was a whole new thing for me that I never thought that I would even work with because I, I tried to do it at one point and I was like ah fuck this I'm not I'm not doing this this is just crazy um, and then it was like 3DS Max I tried to um, learn and it just wasn't working out and then I discovered Cinema 4D and that felt more to me like After Effects, and I was, it had more of a familiar feel to it, and so I was able to, to go with that and run with that, and, uh, and again, with that, just kind of self-taught. Self um, throughout the process, while I was learning, though, I did, you know, meet other uh, like visual effects artists. I wouldn't even consider myself like a bona fide visual effects artist. I almost feel like I'm a hacky in a way, because I'm not, I mean, because I'm not doing this like a full-time thing as a VFX guy. It's like I'm just doing it just to make my videos a little bit better or as, as much as I hope them to be. Um, so I, I, I felt, you know, I, just, I wanted some camaraderie, someone I could talk to about these different things. And so, um, you know, I met mutual, I, had, I met people, you know, here in LA that were mutual friends of, of friends that dealt with this stuff. And I would just, you know, get in touch with these people, pick their brains, became friends. And so now I have sort of a little support system going on, you know, with, with other, uh, other people who are doing the same thing. I wouldn't necessarily say a mentor, but you know, if I have a question, I could, you know, I could ask one of these guys and maybe they'll have an answer. But that's yeah, that's just been my experience with it. Next. Yeah, Sam. I have kind of a selfish question too. Um, I was just wondering, uh, I s you've done like some videos for Duck Down Records. I was just wondering what is it like working with Sean Price? Oh, you know <laughs> First of all, I love you guys, man. You guys are like familiar with Duck Down, and I feel like you guys are. I feel like we probably have some similar interests musically, so that's really cool. Um, Sean Price, man, that 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 guy's a character. I mean, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Sean Price or or, or or familiar with his personality, but he just has a he's just a very unique individual. And I think the first time I met him was on the 